NXT 2016. This is interviews, music reviews, opinions, and more. This is, this is The Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are one out of you here today in episode 275 of The Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thanks so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button on today's episode of the podcast. I have a kick-ass episode for you here today that I try to every single week here on The Hotter Show. We are sitting down with my old buddy, Michael Antia of AAA Audio, and we have, uh, well, we catch up because we haven't had Michael on the podcast since about 2016. And a lot has changed since then. He's been working in the industry. So we, of course, talk about that, obviously, about how COVID has affected the entertainment industry, a little bit about kind of our thoughts on that and kind of the unfortunate side of, you know, him not being able to work right now in the entertainment industry, which is his field due to uh, COVID-19 and maybe some ideas for things that we can do, maybe to help out with that once things do get started again. We, of course, talk about some other projects he's done with AAA Audio, a little bit of music talk, and, of course, uh, just some other fun random stuff because Michael and I have known each other for a long time and it was really great to get to catch up with him again. So I hope that you guys enjoy the conversation. I certainly did. Thank you, Michael, again so much for coming on the show. It was great to get to catch up with you, buddy. And best of luck with everything going forward. Uh, and we will definitely be keeping an eye out uh, for something we talk about near the end of the show. So I'll hold you to that. Uh, of course, I want to thank everybody for supporting on last week's episode of the show. I apologize again that it was so late. Um, I ended up putting up Sunday morning. <laughs> so I apologize that it was so late, but we're getting this done a lot more further in advance. So uh, barring any major issues, you guys should be seeing this on Thursday. <laughs> so that out of the way, uh, of course, before we jump into the chat with Michael, I want to give a quick second to give a much needed shout out to the company that helps keep my beard feeling so hey man, fantastic. is your beard dry? Got My some major itch going on. Or maybe beard. you are a sufferer from the dreaded beard dandruff. If this sounds like you, I've got the solution. Make your beard the meanest it's ever been with Mean Beard. Mean Beard is an exceptional beard care line offering the world's meanest beard oil, beard balm, both of which come in five different scents. They also offer a one-of-a-kind beard enhancer, Mean Whip. Their products are specially formulated with the richest natural carry oils and the finest ingredients to help you grow a glorious, healthy, and full mean beard. Proudly made in Ohio, USA for the meanest beardsmen. Now, I personally have used these products for over three years, and I can tell you without a shot of a doubt that they are amazing, and it has truly helped my beard so much. Not to mention that the people responsible for this company and behind this company are freaking amazing human beings. Can't say enough great things about them. Check out their beard care products, combs, and swag on the web at meanbeardco.com. That's mean, M-E-A-N, beard, B-E-A-R-D, co-co.com. When you go on there and check out, be sure to use my code MB15TJH. That's all uppercase MB15TJH. And you'll save 15% off your order. 15%. What are you waiting for? Go on there right now. And while you're at it, be sure to check out Mean Beard on Instagram, as well as join Mean Beard's community on Facebook. And always remember, folks, it's not just the beard, it's the attitude. All right, gang, I'm super excited about this because I have not had this guy on the podcast since episode 85 of the show back in 2016, in December, no less. We figured out that this was kind of an accidental reunion four years later. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to welcome onto the show my buddy, Mr. Michael Antia from AAA Audio. Michael, what is up, buddy? How you doing? Oh, I'm great, TJ. Thanks so much for having me back. I uh, can't believe it's been so long, but uh, I'm really happy to be back. Really excited to you know, chat for a little while and just excited to see how things are going for you. Yeah, buddy. It's been too long, man. And, and it's funny because you're someone who, just to get sappy for a second, like I, kn- I knew you in my previous life. You, know, you took lessons throughout my entire time at Gigs Music. So in a kind of a weird roundabout way, I feel like I kind of watched you grow up a little bit. You did. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're this this bright young man and it's like, man, this is just so cool for me. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Don't let my head get too big here. My head can't <laughs> fit anymore, but you know. Man, I like how you dressed up too. I'm I'm wearing like a, a I mean I'm wearing a nice Jay Bridges large oh, oh. Hey, nice you know Jay you gotta Bridges plug the merch t shirt. So. I would so. argue that looks better than the colored shirt. I would ah, more professional, I guess, right? But yeah, exactly. Mean beard hat. But anyway, it is what it is. But buddy, what's what's been going on with you the last four years? Oh man. Well, where do we start? 
Uh, more importantly, though, I mean, this year has been an absolute mess. Yeah, <laughs> this year is just – and I, maybe let's start with that. How – like, what have you been doing this year? How have you been holding up? Like, so many people have been – just you hear different stories, but one common thing is that a lot of people have just been kind of just struggling with this year for, you know, for yeah. lack of a better term. Yeah, no, I think that's the best way to put it. And honestly, I, I think it's kind of nice to get this perspective too, because there's mm-hmm. so many industry people in the entertainment industry who are struggling really, really hard and it never gets talked about. It's very rare. It, it just always gets put to the wayside. And frankly, I would love to shed some light on that. Please do. Um, yeah. Just, well, cause that's the thing is for yeah. those who don't know, you are someone in the industry, you know, you're an engineer and then also you did live sound tech as well, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I'm an audio and visual engineer at rebel in Toronto, the nightclub concert venue. And, mm-hmm. uh, we've been closed since March. So it's, it's basically a huge question now if they're even going to reopen afterwards, but, uh, we're hoping so. I mean, it's a really cool venue and I've loved working there. So, Fingers crossed that they'll reopen. And, uh, but yeah, I've learned a ton there. It's been an amazing time. And I, I owe a lot of my musical growth to, to working there. So got some cool stories for sure. Definitely. So, well, so once that closed up and definitely we'll touch on that in a little bit, cause I'd love Absolutely. to kind of hear some of those stories and that, but once that closed up, like what was it? So was it pretty much like right away the second they announced that, Hey, we're close. Was it just like, guys, we're done. Let's just, you know, because I mean, like Rebel is, it's literally just a live, like entertainment venue, correct? There's no, Pretty like, much. yeah. Okay. So they do, um, we actually do a lot of corporate events there okay. as well. So basically they do, it's the nightclub on the weekends. So you'll do a Saturday, Sunday club nights and whatnot. Um, there's also an outdoor venue there. So that's pretty cool as well. But throughout the weekdays, obviously it's kind of difficult to fill that time. So we'll bring in different companies who want to say, you know, We'll do security firms or, or insurance oh, firms okay. or whatever, and they'll come in and do corporate events and uh, meetings and discussions there. They'll use our floor space and our stage, um, and we'll do concerts during weeknights. So it, it's it's a pretty busy and Very crazy busy schedule place. for us, yeah, because you know we can work a twelve-hour shift somewhere and then have to be back in three hours for another seventeen-hour shift, and then be Holy back cow. two days later for another fifteen. So it's 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 pretty wild. Well, and that's kind of what's what's funny about that is the last time we spoke, like, because we kind of reconnected literally like three days ago. And I was like, yo, let's do a podcast. <laughs> like, I didn't realize how long it had been since we even spoke. But like, yeah, you had just gotten the job. And that was, when did you start there? That was, it's been at least a year, at least. At now, Rebel, it? Yeah, it's been um, almost, I think just over a year. I think it was yeah. 2019 March, actually. Yeah, so probably mm. just over a year. Mm crazy like just i just was thinking of that now i'm like i remember you telling me you got the job because i think we yeah. were getting ready to do a podcast or something and he was like i something gotta like go that. do this and yeah. i was like buddy go kill it like you know so it's it's kind of it's kind of funny about that but um with your normal let's just talk about this now since we're yeah, discussing yeah. it what exactly was your role with that with like from with rebel there so more or less uh, it would Honestly, it would vary a fair bit depending on if we're doing a concert, whether we're doing a nightclub night or whether we're doing, uh, you know, a corporate. Um, but typically it would involve, we'll offload a truck, you know, say, say the, uh, the artist is, shows up, mm-hmm. offload the truck, you know, discuss with everyone where everything needs to be. Um, we'll get everything set up on stage, start dialing in people's sounds, whatnot, get mics in place. Um, and then thankfully after that, my job gets a lot easier because I more or less get to... <laughs> kind of sit back and just make sure everything is running well after that. Um, We do lighting and visuals and stuff like that as Mm -hmm. well. I mean, that's not so much my specialty, but we all help each other out there as much we can. So whatever needs to be done, really. Exactly. Exactly. It's a team effort to make sure we just get the the best, we'll say the best entertainment experience possible. (laughs) Yeah. So we just want to make sure it runs well and runs good. (laughs) Awesome. Very good, man. Well, and again, like it, it, it sucks that it's, you know, it, it's kind of turned to this, but what happened when everything shut down? Like what was kind of the, I guess for lack of a better wording, the vibe going of that? Like did, was there like, Oh, we'll be back in a couple of months or like, what was kind of the vibe with that? It was pretty weird. Honestly, when things started, everyone was in a bit of a, a disbelief, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause everyone was just sort of, Oh, you know, 
we were hearing about COVID on the other side of the world yeah. and no one really reacted. So when we were here, it was always just kind of like, oh, is it, you know, is this actually going to affect us? Is this going to, is this going to touch us at all? And then once we started seeing the case count starting to rise in our area, everyone started talking about it. Yeah, a little bit it's more. when it got like, real. Yeah. yeah, you know, what's going to, what's actually going to happen here. And unfortunately, it was really, really quick. Um, you know, once things started getting exponential increase and government started stepping in and saying, hey, you know, we're going to have to go into lockdowns and whatnot. Um, obviously, with our industry, concerts and nightclubs, everyone's packed together. So it's yeah. going to be, it was the first one to go and it's going to be the last one to come back. So it's just a huge struggle in that sense. We, we all kind of sense the impending doom once the lockdowns were starting to be called out. And uh, it's been pretty, it's been a negative, we'll call it a negative energy around the industry since um, we were sort of thinking, oh, you know, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be a month because that's what they're saying was, you know, the couple weeks and then oh, we'll be back to normal. Um, and then it was, oh, you know, maybe another couple more weeks or a couple more weeks. And then it was, it's just gone for good. Well, and that's the thing that's this so crazy about it is like, um, I had the pleasure of having a gentleman on by the name of Hoogie, um, who is the uh, bass and keyboard tech for Eric Bash from Shinedown, oh, no um, way. which was, I'm a big fan of his. So that was really cool yeah, for that's me. Awesome. <laughs> but um, that's really cool. And he was speaking about it as well. Cause like, obviously it's, you're all, it's the entertainment industry, you know? So he, he spoke a little bit about how, how like, Oh, we'll be back in a couple of months. And, it was more off air we were talking about it, but he was like, yeah, man. He's like, we didn't think we was going to be this long. We really didn't. No one, no, no did. one did. But then at the same time, how do you know? But like you were speaking about before, how like not a lot of people are really talking about it. And it's so hard because there's so much unknown as to when we can start getting things going again, what that's going to look like. How are we going to be able to make people feel comfortable? Like there's going to be a lot of work to, help basically kickstart that industry again because like how, how are we going to be able to make people feel comfortable again that's more my thing and yeah. as someone who's in the cleaning field and during my my real job and that sure. i'm like you know my job is to clean and make people feel comfortable by seeing me cleaning and things of that nature so i'm like you know do are we gonna they're gonna have to hire people to do stuff like that are they gonna have to like what do they do like what in, in your opinion what do you think is kind of gonna happen like once say we're talking like the reality situation is probably this time next year from what yeah. a lot of experts are saying yeah maybe even into into the year after when basically even if there's a vaccine or whatever we're not going to talk about that because that's just you know depending <laughs> on who you ask topic. it's either you know um even if people are doing everything right there's going to be people that aren't going to feel safe no matter what so yes. like what, what do you think maybe can be done to, to kind of help people feel safer, even just from, some, from some, again, from someone who is in that industry? You know, I, for short periods, uh, or at least short term, more accurately, I really think the, the whole virtual concert thing is 100% going to be the way to go. Yeah. That's in the short term. I, I really don't think the industry is going to be able to find a way to make any money other than through virtual events and potentially outdoor events, like, you know, drive-in concerts, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. which honestly, I love that idea. I think it's a great idea. So and you're all for that. I'm all for the okay. drive-in concert idea personally. Um, and that would probably be, you know, short to medium term kind of thing. Once we start rolling out vaccines, once people are not, uh, not, not as freaked out about going out yeah. in public and, you know, and we're actually allowed to, you know, that's a whole other yeah. thing. That's the other side of it. As we speak, we're in, you know, phase lot. We're in lock. I don't know if, is, is Windsor in lockdown again yet? Or? Windsor's not. We're in okay. red zone. They're calling yeah, it. Same with, um, I think yeah. we're going actually, no, I think we're going in the great month. I don't, I don't know, whatever, but yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure. But um, anyway, for, for long term, I really think it's going to be a struggle. I honestly think it's going to be, as you say, next year, probably beyond that. Yeah. Just because it's gonna, we're going to need everyone to be comfortable enough to actually get back into the venue. And there's, there's no way to keep social distancing protocols in a venue like that, in a situation like that with alcohol, with drugs, with all that going on, it, it would probably just end up being unsafe for everyone involved. 
So exactly, yeah. I really not think just it's, the, mm-hmm. sorry, there's actually not just the patrons, but also the staff, right? Exactly, exactly. So I really think it's going to be uh, just a really tough long term thing for this industry specifically mm-hmm. because we're so reliant on being face to face and being close together. That's the whole atmosphere. That's the whole reason people yeah. go to shows. You know, you can watch a show on YouTube, it's not the same. Yeah. That's why you want to go to shows. And it's, it's being shoulder to shoulder with people. It's, you know, it's bumping each other. You, it's got to be a part of the experience. Exactly. It's mosh pinning and, you know, meeting someone at a show and becoming friends because you're both rocking out to the same band or exactly. seeing someone with a t-shirt that you, oh, buddy, oh, you like that band? Oh, so do I, man. Like, yeah. it, it, you can't, there's uh, Jamie and Joshua from Hate Breed and the Joshua Show talks about this all the time where he says, thank God you can't download that feeling of, yeah loud amps in the face like that's just whole thing for. right like because yeah. then there'd be no industry it'd be it'd just be dead but with something like this it's so scary for you know people like yourself who are in the industry because like what like what's where's the end? happen and where's you know the there's been certain things that have been trying to push for more support for those people because just to get pissy for a second there's government officials that are going on about like oh well you know you guys need to learn a new skill and do this and do that it's like what what that's your solution this is me saying this by the way guys your solution is to just okay people who have made a living at this and that help entertain us and do things that i i I can't do what you do for example man i could never do that like whatever (laughs) Am I going to sit here and be like, well, Michael, listen, man, I know that you're, you're, you're talented. You're doing this, this music stuff, bro. Yeah. Oh, very cool. But like, I think it's time you get a real job, you know, like, it's pretty like what? yeah, it's just like, really? That's your solution. Yeah. Like there needs just, to be something better. It's there just, it, it pisses me off because I have friends in the industry and I know people that it's being affected and just, it wouldn't like, is there a solution in sight to get, people back in venues sooner unfortunately i don't think so but is there other is there more that we could be doing i'm not sure no. i gotta be honest with you there's one thing in particular just to lighten the mood a little bit which was sure yeah yeah please do i just had to get that out yeah yeah no absolutely <laughs> i absolutely love this idea i think it, it wouldn't work i don't think it's practical in any way shape or form but i, I absolutely love the idea when i heard it i think it was live nation who was originally considering this oh like, god how do we how do we get people back into venues how does this happen and they were discussing basically the equivalent of a human scoop yeah. suit yeah <laughs> it's like a plastic thing that would be given to you like a ppe equipment at the front door goes over your shoulders and basically just covers your head <laughs> or like a bubble too i've, I've yeah. heard that where yeah. like literally you have a group of five and you just have a bubble you stand in and that's, that's it it's too funny and i'm like i mean to a point that would work it just number one they'd have to be disinfected when once everyone got in you'd have to disinfect everything yep. hi i'll do that like you'd have to, I don't know. It would, it's just, it's such a weird thing because that is hilarious. By the way, that's yeah, just, I thought it was fantastic. People walking around. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, yeah, just so enjoying good. the be yeah, so there'd be to see. people mosh pinning with that. Like <laughs> I've seen videos of people like, you know, those like giant balls you can get in. Yes, like the, yes. I've seen people, videos of people like that mosh pinning with those. Like it's just, that's I mean, amazing. it would technically work, I guess, but I don't know. And that's, what's so hard about it. Right. Like, it's just like, what do you do? What, what, what can we do to, you know, like the, the live stuff, uh, the drive-ins and things like that are, are cool. I'm all for it. Um, The virtual stuff is cool. Whatever we can do, because you know, if these artists are doing these virtual shows and these drive-in shows, they still need people in the industry. Exactly. What I mean, I'm more for the drive-in stuff than anything, because I feel like that's going to, there's going to be need, they need more people for that. I would agree what with you I on mean. that. Yeah, like, you, can, you can run a technical event with, you know, minimal people. You, you yeah. need their tour staff to set up yeah. their equipment. And then you would need, you know, a single person from your streaming service to get that set up for the numbers that they would have. And then you're done. Um, exactly. Whereas versus in a driving theater, you know, you have to think about all the cleanup afterwards. You have to think about all the actual physical setup because there are still visuals that are still you know, massive audio equipment that needs to be brought in. All the truck drivers still need to bring all the gear there. All of the, you know, the venue needs to do all the upkeep and all that kind of stuff. So it brings a lot of people back into the workplace, which I 
think you know we need right now because no one has any work thankfully yeah. for me being you know i've got half of that live background and half of the studio background i've been able to you know kind of do some stuff mm -hmm. in between that's sort of helped out but i'm in a very lucky position that way not everyone's in that position and as you yeah. were saying earlier i you know if we were just for example computer technology people or you know grocery store workers or something like that who are in the same situation they wouldn't be saying the same thing yep. to us as mm -hmm. like go get it you know go find a new specialty oh, we need to help these people it's like and you're like I, it's like it's it's like a stigma based on the industry yeah that were somehow not worth being helped i i don't yeah. even know how that's really happened but you know and anyone who disagrees with that like they're just because I've, I've seen it i've seen people be like well you know like we i've had this conversation with people who this well you know like like you need to have a fallback plan it's like what this is an industry that makes more money than most industries it's a massive you know industry. it's, it's one of the huge biggest. and just that's it there's no just oh you know sorry but then you've got people who with all due respect again this is me saying this absolutely like we're not, you know we're not taking away from anyone yeah, here exactly. either we're just trying to defend the position of yeah. those who are not being given any extra support mm -hmm. and there's you know there's people who might be working i don't know uh as a bank teller or something sure who that's probably a horrible example i can't think of anything else right now <laughs> but like who you know when there was no in-person banking happening what were they doing were the government saying to them oh well you guys need to learn a new skill it's like what? it's probably yeah. a terrible example but just like people who you know like if i was out of work you know what i mean which you know thankfully i've been very fortunate where i haven't been out of work because of the field i'm in but like if I was out of work, I, the government probably wouldn't be saying to me, oh, you need to learn a new skill. They'd be like, oh, well, let's, let's help these frontline workers who are out of work now. It's like, well, what about the people that work just as hard and pay their taxes and are you know, good citizens and everything and all that fun stuff who- We'd like to think so. <laughs> help contribute to the economy with this great industry and just, ah, fuck, yeah, they'll be fine. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't just, make a lot of sense to me either, but- I don't know. It's just, it's strange. Yes. It's strange that it was just almost like abandoned that quickly. I would agree with you. You know, and there's been a lot of, you know, like the, um, I can't recall the name, but off the top of my head, but it was like r the red out, the day of red out or something like that. Oh or, um, yeah. Light up event. It was blackout something. It was, it was it an red out black. or something. It was yeah. Blackout, it was like a blackout. Yeah. There was a bunch of stuff that was happening. I think it was Live Nation who started that too. I could be wrong, but there, it was really just to, to try and give some support to yeah. the industry workers. That's who, all it is. You know, no one had heard about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Because it's, it's like a lot of people have just been not really understanding that. Hey, uh, <laughs> like, what do you think they're doing right now? You know what I mean? Like, like again, just to go back to Hoogie for a second. Like when I had him on, he literally was like, "Yeah, I'm." Uh, trying to work on guitars and doing some drywalling and like he's just trying to do whatever he can he has, he has a mortgage to pay he's got a family he's got th four three kids at home he's like they're hungry yeah. they eat everything like he's like i gotta keep working like and it's just like i don't know man it's just like because people think of that industry and they're like oh the artists will be fine they're all millionaires it's like it's everyone behind the scenes yeah to yeah and, well you know and obviously the artists that are in yeah you know a different I mean, situation yeah. from the top two percent yeah oh yeah metallica is gonna be fine but you're gonna be okay <laughs> well it was i think it was um an article that uh i think it was bill from mastodon put out where he was talking about how like you know he's like i'm on government eight right now yeah and people like, are like what like putting like, that in perspective to yeah some people. you're mastodon he's like i know <laughs> i don't make any money unless i'm on tour yeah. And, it's like, and unfortunately what? that's that's another part of it too mm -hmm. is now that we're into the whole streaming digital side of the industry yeah. physicals physicals were are where all the money are physicals yeah. and live so now we're in this situation where 
sorry to backtrack even more. No, no, that's okay. Yeah. The industry is sort of in a mindset right now or pre COVID of Spotify, Apple, all that kind of stuff. Streaming services are meant to be a, um, an advertising stream basically for yeah. tours that because, you know, you make no money off of streams. It's, it's, it's a broken system still. And we're working, you know, everyone's working on it, but it's, it's a broken system and everyone made their money through touring. Yeah. And you know, now that that Avenue is gone, we're left with streaming income, which is negligent. Nothing. Yeah. And that's, that's it. You know, people are going to buy vinyl for Christmas, which that'll help. But I mean, that'll help the artists and labels. That's it. Yeah. It doesn't help anyone else. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's, it's that live, the live sound people, the techs, the stage hands, the drivers, the everything. There's so many people involved. Yeah, there's so many. And you don't really know until you really start paying attention. Like, and it's just, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's hard. It's, it's crazy to think about. Like there's been a lot of talks lately about, um, oh, there's going to be this, this renaissance in the music industry once things come back because so many people are going to be like, oh my God, shows, yay. And like, everyone's going to cl- clamor out. And it's, I think there is going to be a big boom, but here's the not great part. There has to be a fucking industry to get back to. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, that's it's the part so some people don't think about. Like, if there's no artist to tour because they had to go get real jobs, like, I don't know. It's, what are you going to do? It's, it, yeah. it's just, it's an impossible situation for everyone. And, you know, again, this industry is in a bad place, mm-hmm. as are so many other industries. And it, this isn't us crying for just for ourselves here it's everyone's in a terrible position right now it's been a terrible year and uh you know sure, hopefully yeah, hopefully yeah. everyone sees some some improvement yeah as we head into the new year like hopefully in a couple months into the new year we can maybe get some shit under control a little bit more and we can kind of try to maybe slowly start climbing out but uh I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's, it's hard, man. It's tricky because there's so, again, there's so much uncertainty and there's so much just not knowing as to what's going to yeah. happen. But yeah. anyway, get, getting off of that, um, I wanted to ask, well, kind of getting off of it, but how exactly did you get started with Rebel? Like, I know that you, obviously, you went to school and everything. So walk me through all that. Like, what did you go to school for? How did you get started with that? And then also on that note, um, what happened with you when you started up with the uh, AAA audio? Like what happened? Like how did that all come about? Sure. Sure. So basically I was in a very privileged position in high school to have access to a studio. Um, St. Stephen's in Bowmanville has a, well, you know, it, it was serviceable. That's what counts. You know, they had, an, they had, an, they had, it was like pro tools seven or something like that. And an old, an old uh, mixing desk and some speakers. So serviceable. It, you know what exactly. I had in my high school? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. I was, I was yeah, in a very yeah, privileged yeah. No, position just, there. Just busting your jobs. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, and I had a shop teacher there who, you know, I had my headphones in every day. I was always listening to music no matter what. And I had a shop teacher who came up to me and was like, hey, you know, we have a studio that doesn't get used by anybody. It was just locked all the time, really. No one knew how to use any of the gear, not even any of the teachers. So basically what ended up happening was myself and uh, Casey, we both ended up getting pulled into the studio and he just showed us around. He was like, hey, if you guys want to spend some time in here, you know, just say so. We always paid attention to this class. We always, you know, we did quite well. And uh, Good kids, you know. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) yes. So he he let us just kind of hang out in there and learn for ourselves. Um, so it was just YouTube video after YouTube video and playing around with different gear. And I just sort of learned to love the quirks of some audio recording and some of the weird gear that we had and how you can make things sound cool, even if they're garbage and just playing around with different things to, you know, it, it just, it really gave me the, the base and the foundation for me to start learning everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, so honestly, from there on, I decided to do a online course at Berkeley School of Music in Boston, um, which was fantastic. I cannot speak highly enough of their online courses. If there's anyone who's sort of in that position, similar to mine, where you're interested in audio production, or if you're interested in music or anything like that, they have online courses that are just phenomenal. 
you need to have some gear, which is the only downside. So you'd have to make a bit of an investment beforehand, but um, the knowledge that you get for the price is you, you can't beat it. Mm. Um, so past that, I decided I needed a little bit more hands-on kind of knowledge. So I decided to go to Metalworks Institute in Mississauga. Um, they have a massive studio there, one of the biggest in Canada, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, owned by Triumph originally. They were the ones who made it and um, learned more of the hands-on stuff there. It was a bit of an overlap, I've got to be honest. There was a lot of stuff from Berkeley that I learned that was just sort of the same there. But I got to use expensive equipment. I got to be hands-on with people in the industry. I got to yeah, talk. It's very hands-on. Exactly. Yeah. So it was very much, you know, we'd walk into the big studio, the real studio and mic up a drum kit, you know, and then we'd walk over to the board and learn signal flow and learn how to repair channel strips and learn how to solder and, you know, do all those kinds of things, which in the industry, yeah, you know, that's what's going to get you hired. That. Yeah, exactly. So, and funnily enough, the one thing that I learned there, I didn't learn at Berkeley, which has been my one single most used skill every single day of my life, wrapping cables properly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Yeah, no, no, for properly. sure. Yeah. yeah. People just, they will give you hell if you don't, uh, if you don't know how to wrap a cable properly. So I was so thankful after that experience. Sure, I scoffed at it originally, but, you know, after getting hired on at Rebel, first shift, we're sitting there wrapping cables and I'm doing it the right way. And half the people who were just hired weren't. And, you know, they're just like, that guy, follow that guy. <laughs> he knows what he's they doing. Kind of now, thing. do they go by, just to go off on a tangent here for a second, do they, were you taught to go by the standard of the cable will tell you where it wants to go? <laughs> no, okay, definitely not. Because that's what I was taught. And I always was like, but shouldn't I tell the cable what it wants to do? Cause it's a cable. The cable it's is like, not well, No, because, the, because when you're wrapping the cable, you know, you see how like it wants to go this way and then you got to loop it back. It's like, what the fuck? I never, I never oh, understood God. that. And I was always like, okay, you pay me. So I'll do what you want me to do. But I, I, I never understood honest, that. I absolutely love that. Just like yeah, the cable will the tell cable you do. where it wants to go. And I'm like, and all that they meant by that is like, okay, let's say I have a kid. Let's pretend this is a cable. Yeah, right? here we go. I mean, technically it's a cable. But, <laughs> so if I'm, if I'm wrapping, I don't know how to wrap cables just for the record. If I'm wrapping this cable and it's doing this, see, see, okay, see how this was like a nice, perfect little circle. And then this one's kind of all funky. So it's like, okay, the cable will tell you it wants to go like this. But it's like, well, no, I will tell the cable where it wants to go. If that makes, that's a terrible example because it's a flat cable, but like you'll be wrapping guitar players out there. You know what I'm talking about? You'll be wrapping a cable and it'll just be like, oh, I'm going over here. I'm going over here. It's like, oh, well, no, then you just wrap it the other way. And it's like, what? It's just not the way to do it. No. But yeah, I, I would <laughs> highly recommend, um, you know, doing a little research into how to wrap a cable properly because what makes the cable do what it wants is when you wrap it improperly. It's, yes. it's called cable memory, funnily enough, is actually what it's called. Um, so it almost like it wrap molds it, to that way. Yeah, 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 exactly. You've got braiding inside of the cable because you have, um, we'll say an XLR cable, for example. So a microphone cable, it's got three different cables on the inside of it, um, which are braided together. So if you wrap it in the wrong way, you know, it'll not, it'll twist. It'll do all these crazy things. That's why your headphones, if you put them in your pocket, coiled poorly don't, so don't do this i don't know how this happened but don't do this <laughs> if you guys aren't watching the video version of the podcast check it out on the youtube but yeah this this cable's all messed up because it wasn't yeah. wrapped properly exactly so you got it you got to teach it and then it's got the right memory you know see, yeah see look what just happened i just tried to wrap it watch okay let's let's you can you can judge my technique here it's a perfect test here so it did at that time very nice but i've seen dudes do this gimmick right well they'll be like They'll do the first, they'll do this. They'll be like, and they'll do this. Yeah, you don't want to do the wrap. They'll, like, <laughs> they'll wrap it, and then they'll be like, and then, and then this, is, this is what gets me. They'll do through, and then they'll pull it. And we'll start like, yeah. we'll start doing this. This cable's pretty messed up anyway, but, and they'll be like, yeah, that's perfect. I'm like, what? Flawless. <laughs> Flawless. 
flawless victory. I don't yes. know if I can get this cable to roll over. I was going to say, yo, show us the proper technique. If I can roll it over here. So look at this beautiful cable. Look at that. <laughs> if you guys aren't watching the YouTube version, please go on the YouTube and check it out. Cause that's, that's a beautiful wrap right there. See, that's content right there. Yes. That's, that's, that's the content people are tuning in for here on the Hogger show folks. Beautifully wrapped. cables. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's true because like, there's nothing worse. It's the same thing with a, um, uh, with an extension cord, same principle. Absolutely. There's nothing yep. worse than when you get my vacuum at work, the people who had it before me, they'd never wrap the cable properly. So it doesn't like, no matter what I do, it just coils it's up cold. and it's, oh, yeah. it's the worst. And it's it just worst. annoys everyone else afterwards. Like, you know, it, it's funny because it ends up saving you so much time. If you're yeah. in the, you know, when you actually work at a concert venue, you, you know, you're working with hundreds of cables on a stage at a time. And when you think about doing, if you've ever been to a concert and seen a changeover, how quick those guys have to be on stage, that's all because everything's laid out well. It's all because it's been coiled properly. All the cables are in good condition. You can just walk up to it and, up, 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 and it's good to go. Whereas if you had to fight the cable for, you know, you're seeing people like doing this where they're like lassoing exactly. the cable. <laughs> exactly. You got to just wrangle it on Who stage. Who the hell wrapped this fun. cable last? Yeah. That's what happens. It's, it's, it's a mess, but it's, it's true. <laughs> for sure. That's funny, yeah. man. I didn't mean to no, interrupt, but just that was, that no, was no, funny. No, not at all. But it's, so it's quite funny. when you were at Metalworks, like that, so like you had said, you know, you learned wrapping mm -hmm. cables. That's what an in invaluable thing in your career. Kind of, was there anything else you learned at Metalworks? Like obviously, you were a player, obviously, you know, mm -hmm. was there anything else you learned at Metalworks aside from all those things? Or like, it was it kind of just like a, almost like a full overhaul in this production side and live sound side of things? I think um, my first year, actually, I did um, business, uh, entertainment, business and marketing okay. as well. So it was a lot of the, uh, the behind the scenes side of it. So learning about copyright, learning about how to market yes. music, how to You and I have talked distribute. about that before. Copyright. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. What a, what a blast copyright is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was absolutely invaluable because you can get a vast amount of information on Google if you just want to go into copyright. And it's very difficult to pull out what's actually useful, especially when you're in, you know, just Canada or just the States or all that kind of stuff. You want to make sure you're getting it right. And um, that was extremely valuable. Um, but more so even when I got into more of the recording side of things, I think just being able to talk to the teachers there. Yeah. Everyone there was in the industry as well as a teacher. And they all really understand the workings of the industry because they've you know, they've worked in it. They've actually years. worked in it. Yeah. 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 And, and are currently working in it. So, you know, sometimes there would be, I gotta be honest, sometimes the class would come second because a person would be called in to do a session or something like that. And then it's, Oh, you don't have a class that day because your teacher's running a session. But, your teacher's uh, in the studio with someone like that's, yeah. that's a pretty good reason to not teach a class though. I think anyway, <laughs> I, I'd have to agree with you. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad at that. Like, no, <laughs> especially for all of us, you know, being musically inclined and, just wanting to be there to do recording stuff. It was always yeah. like, Oh, you know, we get it. You're, you're pursuing your career. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just learning from them was, you know, an amazing experience. They're all very well-spoken in that sense. So. That's awesome, man. So from there, what was kind of your, your end game with it? Like, I know that obviously, you know, you started up triple a, um, mm -hmm. which, like you said, you've you know done a little bit with this past year, which has been great. You've been a little busy with that, but yeah. was that the immediate goal? Because pretty much, how long were you graduated into when you started AAA and then got work at Rebel? That was it. wasn't that long, was it? No. So I was actually I got hired on at Rebel while I was still at. Uh, oh, at oh okay, yes, that's right. Yeah. So that was uh, that was pretty busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the end goal for me is. I think always been in having my own studio and being able to record bands and whatnot. And I really, in my own personal opinion on music, I want to bring some of that character back. Um, you know, a lot of times people now will not spend a lot of time on pre-production and recording and they'll just do the fix it and post, Yeah, you know, because there's so much technology available. There's so much, uh, so many tools available for people. Auto-tune. Things like, like exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, there's always a different feel that you get from an, I'm not going to say unedited because everything's edited to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's so much more character that you get out of a proper performance yeah. than you do from a performance that's been edited and chopped and spliced. And if you, if you have a guitar part 
if you have a lead that was played really sloppy and is out of time, so you have to go in and mess around with it to make it, you know, fit in time with everything, it's not going to sound as good and have the same feel as just a perfectly in time, in key solo or lead part. Exactly. And I think perfect um, explanation for this would be any Beatles music. You know, yeah. I don't think they even recorded a single song with a metronome. Yeah. And, you know, they would just sit there and record it track on track on track on track. And it, you can see the results in the character and how much fun yeah. they were having while they were doing it. It was just the straight, you know, they were all comfortable in that environment and you can tell. So I always preach that whenever someone comes into my studio and I'm working with them is, hey, I want you to be as comfortable as possible in this environment so that we can get the best possible performance. And so what can I do for you? to make you as comfortable as humanly possible because I want you to just belt your heart out and feel like I'm just here cheering you on. You know, you're, you're the guy who's just basically pressing, not clicking get, buttons. Yeah. Not like there's more to it than that, obviously, but like, you know, I'm this, this person that's just cheering you on and everything is good, but I'm, I'm pressing some buttons. Like don't think of exactly. me as, Oh, this guy's judging me. And he's, Oh, he's, he's, Oh, you know, if you have a suggestion, it's like, oh, well, he thinks I suck. Oh my gosh. Like that's, that's not exactly. at all what's happening. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, you know, the delivery on, um, I end up producing a lot of things that come through my studio just because mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, part of my service that I offer is I'll help produce whatever it is that you want to work on. Um, and as I said, my approach to that is always just, I want to make you comfortable. I want the performance to be the most important part of all of this. Definitely, it's not yeah. me. It's not my editing. It's not any of that. It's the song that you've written and it's the performance that you've put down. That's what's important. Definitely. And at the end of the day, a good producer, a good engineer would think like that. You know what I mean? It's about you're working with an artist because, or this artist is in this position or at least they should be because there's something about them that is unique. They have a, the music has a characteristic that is unique or they have a style that is unique. So it can happen a lot with bigger producers where they'll work with someone and it just won't sound like that band or uh, there's great producers out there who are so good at just, and that's why a lot of bands work with the same producers so much because they just, they make them sound, you can kind of clean it up a little bit and, and they'll get more out of certain artists, but like a producer, like, um, uh, something off the top of my head. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Johnny K at all. I'm not. No. So he did like early disturbed. That was his, oh, when he, okay, his cool. rise to fame, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's done everyone, all my music. He's basically done all of it, like everything. Um, awesome. But the one thing that I'm really remembering that I'm looking back at is uh, he did a Seven Dust record, uh, Cold Day Memory. And mm -hmm. Seven Dust has always been a very, like Lejean, the vocalist, he has such a unique, soulful voice. And one thing that Johnny said to them was, you know, you've never really captured that performance on a record, or at least you haven't in a while. It's been very clean which is good, but there's this raw emotion that he has that just you can't, they haven't captured it. So he worked a lot with him, like just, okay, again, 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 like yep. to the point where it's like, it would almost start pissing them off. That, so then it's like, okay, that's, that's how you can get a good performance sometimes. There's, there's ways... Um, Sometimes as a producer, you'd have to push someone a little bit or you have to, you know, but all while still making sure that they're comfortable. Unless, of course, you're tracking metal bands, then sometimes you got to make them run around the block six times and stick a microphone in their face and have them start screaming their head off. Shout go. outs to The Machine uh, with Lamb of God. <laughs> have, you ever, so have you ever, have you ever, you should, you should go on and look up, um, uh, the machine is the, I don't know his real name. He's, they call him the machine um, or just machine. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Um, he worked with Lamb of God on a uh, sacrament. Okay. And um, there's a song walk with me in hell. And, and he said to Randy, he's like, you know, like this is a really heavy song. It's lyrically, it's a very like, real raw song. And he's like, this final verse, like this final bit of the song, he's like, you need to be out of breath for it. You need to feel like you've just been through a battle. And he's like, okay. 
So I'll just sound like I'm out of breath. He's like, nah, you need a performance of it. I want you to sound like you've just been through hell. You just went through a huge show. Like, and he's like, well, how the fuck do I do that? Just go run around the block a few times. There you go. And you know, Randy has a cigarette in his mouth and he's running. (laughs) And then he runs back up the stairs and he's, uh, 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 and he's like, stick that mic in your fucking face. He's just, ah, ah, and he's just, he has nothing left. And like at the end of it, he was like, he'd like take the next day off because he was just all messed up. But the performance of that song, like when you listen to it, it's like, oh my God, like it sounds so, oh, I wonder how they did that in production. Nope. That was, that was all performance really. It's like, raw yeah yeah performance yeah so there's something to be said for that for sure absolutely no i two examples of that that i'm that i always love to bring up are um revolution um mccartney's vocal yes yeah he had recorded the entire album that day don't quote me on that but it was either the whole album or most of the songs that Mm. day so his voice was just gone like totally gone and that's the take they ended up using is the one where he's just blasted his vocal cords out. And it's, it's a signature sound now, really. It, that song is so renowned for that vocal track just because he was totally blasted when he did it. Um, another great example too is Michael Jackson. He could not record with a microphone on a stand. He just couldn't. So he would always have it in his hand dancing around like he was really? on stage. Yeah, it's huh. the only way he would record. You never knew that. That's actually yeah. another example I just thought of that will be one that you'll probably relate to a little bit more um, was uh, Nirvana with something in the way. Have you ever oh, heard really? the story of that, that one? No, I haven't. So he had, they were trying to record this song. It's a very, if you're familiar, if you guys are familiar with the song, it's a very soft acoustic guitar, basic drum track, very quiet, very heavy song lyrically in that. And um, they spent, I think two or three days trying to just, get this guitar track and this and this they couldn't do it kurt wasn't happy with anything that they were doing and he just he was in this big room and he said to the producer uh butch vig he just said it needs to sound like this and he picked up this old shitty guitar that had four strings and it was all fucked up with its tuning and he just started playing it and singing it and it sounded just like unreal and butch just went don't move and he set up a bunch of mics all around them and that's the take they used one take the whole thing that's it that's awesome and he was like okay well i guess now we got to record it he's like no we're done (laughs) like and that's basically the track i think they ended up overdubbing some vocals and stuff like that so don't quote me on that but that initial track was just kurt in this big room that is not made to record a guitar like that and just it sounds like he's like under a bridge and like just, it's such a cool sounding song and the guitar sounds terrible. And like, just they've never really been able, like when they did that performance uh, for the MTV unplugged, he basically had to rewrite the song. Cause yeah. like, he's like, I can't, you can't get you can't reproduce it like that. Same with Pantera. A lot of people, Oh, you know, you can't make a guitar sound just like dimes did because it was always a little out of tune, no matter what. Same with Chuck Berry. Say, there's just little things like that are so fascinating to me. You know, it's what makes it, it's what makes those absolute great musicians. Yeah, great. It's their touch. It's their feel. It's their character. It's something that can't be reproduced. You know, I could play the Hotel California solo as many times as I want. It's not going to sound the same. Yeah, it has to be that amp, that room, that player, and just everything together makes for the performance, and you know, makes it the magical part that it is so when you're recording uh an artist is that something you're really um focused on where it's like okay let's because as great as it is that people can literally record a pretty good sounding song in their bedroom is that something you're very conscious of where it's okay let's really like you put a lot of time into into pre-production and stuff like that to make sure okay you know your part you're playing we know the song that like the type of tone that we're going for. Like, do you usually put a lot of work into that? Uh, honestly, as much as the artist is willing to put in, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going to spend as much time as I can because it makes my life so much easier as well as, you know, it's getting a quality product at the end. Right. So um, 
you know, typically with an artist, I'll say at least the entire first session that we're meeting is going to be pre-production at the very minimum. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, okay, so we'll start very generic. Like, okay, what kind of songs do you listen to? What's sort of your favorite stuff? Do you get really inspired by this artist or this artist? Or, you know, if you're listening to this song, what is it that really makes you tick? Like, why do yeah. you like that so much? And once you start picking apart the artist's brain a little bit more, you can really see, okay, you know, when you listen to that drum beat, they love the way it grooves. They love the way it sits in the mix. They love the way that it sits in the low end or the relationship between the bass and the kick, for example, is a huge yeah. one in, in recording and mixing. So if you're talking to this artist and they, for example, with my most recent project, love doo-wop and vintage and all that kind of stuff, you can get a much greater sense for what kind of equipment you're going to need later yes, down the line. Yeah. Like, you know, okay, I want an upright bass, but what kind of upright bass? Do you want fretless, not fretless, different models, different sounds, how you want to mic it? All of that kind of stuff comes down to the pre-production that you've talked about beforehand. And that way, when the artist is strolling in on recording day, I'm sitting there saying, I've got every single project ready to go. Every single track is there. Every single instrument that you want to record is ready to go. So they can walk in and say, oh, I feel like doing piano. Okay, great. Piano's there. Piano's all ready to click, go. Yeah. And they're ready to go. And at least then the sound is, you know, as close as possible to what they want to be hearing. So when they do their performance, it feels right. It feels emotional. It feels, it has their character when they're hearing it. And that's what makes people get inspired is, you know, oh man, I'm really feeling this. I'm really vibing. That's this. it. Really yeah. Yeah. Getting behind that's it. it. That's how you get the performance, the if comfort they, and the, and the character. Definitely. Yeah. If they walk in and you know, oh, I feel like playing piano today. Okay, hang on a minute. You got to go and you got to set up the piano. And definitely so. That's a, that's a really good way of looking at it. Yeah. Make sure you're always prepared kind of, you know, if you know, if you know, especially if you know, I mean, if they're sitting there all of a sudden and they're like, you know, I think this part needs a xylophone. It's like, uh, okay. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Run me, run, so like run me through, we've talked a little bit obviously about like the live music stuff and sure. kind of how you got into this, but walk me through like some of the artists you've worked with and some of the projects you've worked on. Live or studio or both? Let's do studio. Cause obviously live, I'm sure you've, probably done, <laughs> done a lot more than that but so walk me through like some of the stuff that you've done with with triple a like in studio so to be perfectly honest with you um triple a came together shortly after i got into rebel and i was really just looking to have a a face just somewhere sure. i could advertise my services of that you know obviously that makes sense um i've done more live stuff through triple a than i've actually okay. done recording mostly because that's just what's available. You know, people very rarely are looking to put money into studio time recently, um, which is fine, but it was, it was my foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And since then I've only done, I think two or three like studio projects with AAA with the most notable being the most recent one with the Christmas, mm -hmm. Christmas album. Um, which the rest is fantastic, are pretty much, by the way. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, but the rest were pretty much, you know, short little editing things or okay. um, just little little tidbits of audio that honestly aren't really worth mentioning. So that was pretty much the first big first project big for me with thing you did, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, if you folks are looking for some good, uh, wholesome, vintage-style Christmas stuff, uh, check it out. Um, what, what, was the, what was the artist's name again? His name is Xavier, uh, Xavier Solis, mm -hmm. um, and the album is called Old Time Christmas. It's very good stuff. Very talented guy, and the production is very <laughs> <Thanks> good. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he was amazing to work with, and I, I'm very thankful for that experience. We really uh, really hit it off together as far as, um, you know, my working method and the way that he works as well. You know, it just, it all worked out amazingly well. We had a great time recording it, and I really think, that comes through in some of the songs that, you know, we're just having fun with the way we did it. And definitely we really like how it came out. You could tell that, that by the performance, like yeah. it's very kind of groovy and fun and like lighthearted, but also it's like this some serious musicianship going on. Like I'm listening to you going, man, like, Oh, like, oh this guy can sing. Oh, he can play. Oh, like it's like oh he could kind of do a bit of everything all right cool yeah, like <laughs> it's pretty impressive he uh our pre-production was pretty extensive uh, i would imagine <laughs> yeah it was just going in okay so what kind of songs do you want he came in with a list of like 
10 songs or something, 10 or 15 songs. And we're like, okay, so which of these ones do you really feel confident with? Which ones do you really like? You know, what are must haves? And then just narrowed down the list from there to things that would actually be doable. And actually we recorded, mixed, mastered, edited, released within a month and a half. Wow. Month and a half. Wow. And I, I think most of that is down to pre-production, making sure everything was ready. Making to go. sure you're just, ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. We were always, you know, when we were working together, it was always on. It was just constantly go, 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 go. Uh, we had some amazing studio musicians come in and do uh, saxophone, trumpet, um, you know, violin. Like there's some really amazing musicianship that went into that album for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Some great players for sure. Um, and again, shout out to that guys, go check it out. Cause it's, uh, it's very, very good. Very much enjoy. So who, was there any, uh, like obviously with rebel, I know like you guys, you know, didn't just do live shows and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like you did the ton of, like you were saying early, like corporate stuff and things like that. But was there any, concerts specifically you did that you you would like to mention that you did that were kind of kind of cool or oh man obviously there was lots but yeah my absolute favorite one that i worked on has to be the interrupters oh nice Um, man that was uh that was an awesome experience everyone in that band their whole team amazing people to work with super positive super just ready to work all the time um you know they came and talked to the whole crew afterwards the band um, and they were, you know, super thankful for everything that we did, which we never really, you know, you don't get that at well, all. Yeah, really. it's rare, probably. They even, you know, after the show was done, they walked off stage and then basically just walked out in the crowd and talked with people for like half an hour after the show, which oh, just cool. was like the coolest thing I'd seen from a band ever. And they had sold out the venue. So, I mean, it was uh, pretty cool to see. Um, and obviously, great sound, great um, great energy to the whole show because they're, yeah, they're a great band, upbeat kind sure. of ska punk sort of vibes um they were a lot of fun uh, snoop dog was crazy just because it's snoop dog so it was that would see be him up close his his team was uh, just amazingly professional at what they do they all know exactly what they got to do exactly what everyone wants to be hearing you know i don't think if i recall correctly he didn't even sound check it was just, uh, you know, really? they, have their te- they have their tech come in and he knows what he wants to hear and, you know, did that for him. And then he just walks on stage, does his thing. Um, but that was, that was an awesome experience. Um, setting up for Dead Mouse was crazy. That would be, that cool. was, that yeah. setup was huge. Uh, more so from the sense of, you know, setting up a DJ board, that's easy, whatever, it's a couple cables, but the truss, the lighting, the effects, the, you the know, show, he, just, he yeah. goes crazy with that kind of stuff. And it, it, uh, it showed. <laughs> yeah. Cause it's, it's not just some dude pressing buttons. There's a performance aspect of it and there's yeah. a show aspect of it. Yeah, absolutely. We were supposed to get, um, his, his cube, whatever it's called cube V3 or something. He's got a, a whole oh, yeah. setup basically where his DJ gear sits inside of it. And it's this crazy LED oh, wall okay. cube. Um, but it was just too heavy for our stage. So unfortunately we couldn't, uh, uh, we couldn't have it in, but anyway, um, I would say those were probably some of the biggest, Oh, um, Ma- hailstorm was good too. Oh yeah. Okay. And that would be cool a cool show. Yes. I have to mention King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard just because of the name it just has to be. <laughs> That's awesome. King Gizzard Fantastic. and the Lizard Wizard. <laughs> right. It's That's just awesome. The best name ever. Yeah. But I mean, you know, we had some, some pretty sizable acts come through and it was more so than anything, just an amazing learning experience. Uh, just seeing all these professionals work in an environment and have all these hundreds of people work together just to make one big spectacle at the end. And it's a, uh, it's an amazing feeling to see all those people having the time of their life every night. It's, it's fantastic. Definitely like working in the industry and it's like, Hey, that's, this is cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. But as you know, people, don't see behind the scenes that we spend, we get there eight hours before the show. We're there for the whole show. And then we're there for another four hours afterwards or or more, right? Because we have someone coming in the next day or later that day or later that night to set something else up. So it's just, it's constantly moving and it's, yeah. It's it's not like you're there an hour before and you're like, all right, see you guys tomorrow. No, No, (laughs) it's a little more that goes into it. You're there until you're told you can go home. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, that's crazy, man. But I mean, it's, you know, I'll hope you can get back to it soon, man. Cause it sounds like, uh, sounds like I really it. loved it. So yeah, definitely. It. Yeah. And obviously it's, it's a 
paid workout every time. So <laughs> can't really, uh, can't complain there either. Exactly. You're doing something you love and it's, what more do you want, right? Exactly. No, you're, you're so right. And I am continuously thankful that I'm in the position to work there. Definitely. So, well, switching gears here a little bit uh, before we kind of slowly get ready to wrap things up here today. Um, what's going on? Because the, the Michael that I know was uh, a very talented musician, obviously still is, but what, what's going on in the music world? Like, obviously, um, I know you live in another basically side of the province now than you did yeah. before with the old band, but have you had any kind of the itch at all, especially during this year to kind of maybe time. record it. Yeah. What's... Oh man. All the time. I, um, <laughs> you know, I have, I don't know if you can see them in the back corner. Oh, other corner. I see back the corner. guitars. Yeah. Got my guitars just kind of chilling back there. The whole rack of, I see of them or whatever it is. Hi guys. <laughs> Hello, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'll always pick them up and play a couple songs yeah. here and then whenever I have the time. Um, but I haven't actually gone out and recorded anything really for myself recently which is something i used to do just all the time mm -hmm. was you know i mean it was all i could do was record things for myself and that's really how i learned was just okay i'm gonna listen to this song i'm gonna build this from the ground up and go from there and that's kind of how i learned to play a bunch of different instruments really too it was just necessity but uh yeah i i really i've been thinking about putting together a sort of ep of originals do it um, which <laughs> i'm I'm tempted That's to That's why do. I wanted to have you on. I'm going to be serious. I wanted to just be like, yo, where is Make the music? Stuff. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, oof, man. Honestly, I, I, need, I need the kick in the butt. That's what I need to do it. I, I would love to make something kind of, have you heard the Blue Stones before? Check on the Take Rolodex. <laughs> I don't think so. Flip, flip, yeah, that's, flip, yeah, that's flip. my brain, bro, literally. <laughs> I'm like, give me a second. <laughs> so good Takes definitely check them out man if you haven't okay. uh, the blue stones oh, some amazing stuff amazing stuff i would love to make some stuff that's kind of like that it's sort of raunchy rock kind of you know really big muff guitars really thick um but also really well produced like really clean okay which i I've, I've kind of fallen in love with that sound more recently so mm -hmm. i think i would love to make some stuff like that definitely so well We'll be waiting for it. So, well, I guess I've said it now. So now you happen. have to do it. I'll hold you to yeah. it. I'll check back in with you a little bit and I'll be like, so how's that big Rocky P coming? It's, it's, it's going to be huge. Huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. <laughs> oh, man. Rest in peace, the drum. <laughs> oh, depending on who you ask. Uh, uh, you, you, sorry. Sorry. He hasn't yeah, said yeah, it yet. But. You know, you know, that's yeah, it. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I probably shouldn't bring that up. It's a little too political. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. We have fun oh, here man. on the Hotter Show. but We um, do. That's fun though, man. So, so the next thing I wanted to ask about. Yeah. How was the production of the Forsaken Potato coming? <laughs> do we oh, have, yeah. did we, we kind of, we kind of had to abandon the project, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I know that I have heard but there's been some some rumors going around here at the studio mm -hmm. that the Forsaken Potato might make a reappearance. I I, I think it needs to. Mm -hmm. You know, I COVID's put us we're in a bit of a setback here with COVID. You know, our production it's 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 behind schedule. You know, our our teams here at Forsaken Potato are working hard. Okay, very good. To bring the Forsaken to bring this Potato technology to the forefront here, but the uh, starchiest most archiest tone perfect tone <laughs> you want character that's you're gonna character. get character that's character i will Every never potato is different <laughs> i will never forget ever in the history of this podcast that joke that i had still, to bring it back up it's so good it's it's honestly one of the funniest moments i've had ever arguably it was really funny and i'm not even going to say anything more if you guys want to know what that's all about you got to go back to episode 86 of the hotter show and listen it's because worth it. number one you're going to be like wow this is a very different podcast um mm -hmm. compared to now but also that was just the best the it was best. too funny it was too good i i'm not even entirely sure what started that 
like what actually brought that I up. I remember exactly. You, you do? I'll, t- I'll tell you off air because I want people to go check right, it out. You know what? No, screw it. Okay. All right. So, because <laughs> just no one's going to listen to it, so it's fine. Um, <laughs> We, we can were hope, DJ. We yeah, can hope. <laughs> we were we were discussing uh, guitar tone, right? And um, I don't remember the lead up into it, but basically, I we were talking about how your your tone used to sound like crap, and then you got this new amp, and you were all excited about it at the time. I think it was the Line Six Spider Three it was. head. It was so the, you were like, four. yes, yeah, yeah, the and, four. And I was like, bro, that's a good amp. Like, cause I I mess I you know I went with the the Line Six and. It's like, uh, you were like, yeah, you know, just before my tone was very like bland and it was just really muffled. And I was like, you know, yeah, it's like you're plugging into a potato. And it just, <laughs> it just you were like, spiraled. What? You know, I can't stand when I accidentally plug into a potato. Why is this not producing tone? <laughs> you know? I need tone. And you're, you know, you're li- the live guy sitting there like, yo, why is this potato not producing proper tone? <laughs> and then with the forsaken tone. potato. Oh, and you so can get good. different mods for it, of course. You can yeah. get the boiled forsaken potato. Ba- you know, you can have the butter course. baked potato. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Mashed, oh, of course, is a very... It's wet sounding, but, you know, it's, um, it's, it's nice. But it's chunky, know? though. Yeah, it's chunky. It's chunky. Though, yeah. it's chunky. It's Fried, good for chugging. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for chugging. <laughs> oh you need my that chunk, goodness. man. You gotta oh. have that chunk. It's important. <laughs> That's there's only funny. there's only so many places where you're gonna get music potato related humor, and this is one of them. Yes, <laughs> this is this is the hotter show's bread and butter, folks. But uh, potato and butter. I don't even. Yes, I don't even know where I got. <laughs> I didn't know where to I be got that but... from. Yes, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know where I got that from, but I was like, oh, like you're plugging into a potato. And then I so like good. I was convinced to make a prototype of it and I just never got around to it. I thought you I, I thought you sent me a photo of something. Oh I did. It, it was one I made on like a meme editor. Oh, it was like a Photoshop yeah. one. Okay, yeah, I couldn't I, remember. I if photoshopped. It was... I was gonna do it because I had like a spare jack. So I was gonna literally push it into a potato oh my and God, be like, that here's amazing. the potato. If you guys, if you guys want me to make a forsaken potato prototype, leave a like on this or hit me up on the socials and be like, we want the forsaken potato. I will Hashtag make it happen. We want potato. Hashtag potato tone. That's, potato tone. you know, that's it. That's, that, that's just the that. best. <laughs> or potato tone. Potato. That's it. Potato. Next that's thing so you know, good. the next time, next time we talk, I'm going to be presenting the prototype of the oh my God. forsaken potato. I hope so. I would be extremely excited and, and flattered. The, and the thing is, I was thinking about it. I'm like, could I actually do this and make it work? And I'm like, I mean, yeah. I would just basically need to have a clean – it would just be a clean signal because I couldn't do yeah. anything else. But I was like, I mean, I could technically make this happen. Technically, it would be hilarious. Yeah. You know, honestly, you could get one of those, like, lunchbox heads, like one of the, the Mox or orange heads – and just that shove the internal inside idea. a hollowed out potato. <laughs> it would probably fit too because they have that so much work. space in that those. That would totally heads. work if I get like it a would. big, big honking potato. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, okay. If you guys want the forsaken potato, I will make it happen. Let me know. It has to happen. It has to. Oh my goodness. That is awesome, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I love Holy this. Cow. That's awesome, buddy. Well, it's, it's been great getting to catch up with you. Um, obviously, with, you know, Everything going on, you know, obviously we know the live stuff is not really a thing at the moment, but with AAA Audio, um, where can people contact you if they have maybe a project they want to work on or if they have a question for you or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you go on to Facebook or, well, actually, yeah, just Facebook for now, we got AAA Audio. Um, if you look, AAA Audio, uh, it should come up. Our website is attached on there as well. All communication methods are on there. If you want to check me out, that's amazing. Um, if you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer them, whether it be, you know, school related, whether it be, you know, trying to make a path into this career as well. I mean, there's only, there's not a ton of people at this age who are, you know, as experienced in the industry yeah, and working yeah. into it. So I would love to be able to give my, my knowledge and my, for, and my opinion on, you know, whatever questions these people may have. And, you know, please reach out. I'm more than happy. More than happy to answer. 
Awesome. Very good. Well, buddy, it's been great getting to catch up with you. I'm glad we were able to do this. And It's been yeah. awesome. It's been yeah, too man. long, and we got to do it again uh, <laughs> before four years. It will <laughs> not be four years before we catch up again, for sure. And I'll make sure to have that forsaken potato ready for you. <laughs> I'm so excited. You have no idea. <laughs> All right, guys. Michael, Triple Audio again. Thank you so very much, buddy. It's been a pleasure talking to you again. Thanks so much, TJ, and I hope you have a uh, great rest of your day. You too, buddy. All homes have signs of life, and well, they aren't always as pretty as you think. The hallway walls still show the scuff marks from that time you were absolutely convinced that that bed frame would fit. The trim of the bathroom stained from that time your favorite feline just had to get a better look at your new nail color. <laughs> And then, of course, there's the spot in the kitchen from that dreaded pasta sauce incident a couple years back. And, well, you get the picture. Make your house feel new again with a fresh coat of paint from Kale Riddick Painting. Offering expert interior and exterior painting, no residential job is too big or too small. Proudly serving Quinty, Ontario and surrounding areas, Kale Riddick Painting will restore your house back into a home. They also do work on new additions or new builds. Contact them today at Kale Riddick Painting on Facebook, or you can contact them at 613-929-7085. 613-929-7085 for a quote today. And be sure to let them know that Hodder sent you. All right, guys, there you have it. That is my chat with Michael from AAA Audio. Hope that you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Michael, it was great to get to catch up with you, my man. And I'm going to hold you to that EP, buddy. We'll be looking forward to hearing it next time. I have you on the show. And thank you guys so much again for tuning in here today. It means the world to me. Video fist bump, boom, and audio fist bump, boom. And I hope that you guys have a fantastic rest of your week. Of course, if I go, I need to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, my hard heads. Scott and Will, thank you guys so very much for your contributions and all your support with the podcast. You guys have got something cool coming your way very, very soon. Uh, in the video podcast world. I have everything ready to go. I just need to basically find 10 minutes to put it together. <laughs> so but once I do, you guys will have that coming. A very special Patreon exclusive show or podcast, whatever that I have done before on there. So keep your eye out for that. If you want to check out the Hotto Show, be sure to subscribe. However you listen to this podcast, whether you're on Apple Podcast or Spotify or Stitcher or Bullhorn or however you listen to the show, YouTube, even if you're on the YouTube, be sure to hit, leave a like and subscribe. Hit that bell button to keep up with all new videos on the Harder Show YouTube channel. You're going to be seeing me do video format a lot more. Um, I've kind of starting to figure it out a little bit. Hopefully, every video gets better as time goes on. I'm able to, uh, you know, upgrade the computer eventually and just make things a little better ski for you guys and i'll stop looking at the thing and i'll just start focusing on the camera and everything when i'm doing these intros and let me know what you guys think of this angle too like i do the when i'm doing the actual chats obviously i look like this and i see some people do this i call this the joe rogan you know because he never looks directly at the camera usually unless he's like saying something and i kind of like this format because it makes it feel like more of a normal real conversation to me because we're not like you know Hey, so then anyway, like, I just, I don't know, I like this a little better, but I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on it, so please be sure to let me know. Drop me a line on the social media, all at The Hotter Show. Of course, the Hotter Show at gmail.com if you would like to reach out or you'd like to come on the show or anything at all like that, hit me up. We got some cool content coming within the next couple of weeks. We have, of course, the end of the year wrap-up at the end of the year here uh, that I'm very, very excited about. Again, with my boy Josh from Still Learning Podcast, so get excited for that. Uh, we, of course, have a Christmas special I'm starting to work on that has kind of become a tradition here on The Hotter Show, and that is uh, some creepy Christmas stories uh, read in my voice that I like to do for reading creepy things. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And then, of course, we have the Best of 2020 Music Showcase, which should be out next week, barring any issues or anything. I'm already starting to work on it. I already got all the bands lined up. So I just need to uh, get this in music together. That's going to be a great episode. You guys should definitely look forward to that and all the other ones I have mentioned. We're going to end off the year strong and head into 2021. Uh, firing on all cylinders here on the Hotter Show, and hopefully you guys you know, are getting ready to uh, kiss 2020 goodbye because I know I am. <laughs> but all that out of the way, thank you guys again so very much for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time on the Hotter Show. Take it easy, guys.